Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Um, Arlene is not here today. On this um, television program today, we will talk about some very prominent um, situations in uh, history that happened over the last uh, week and over the last couple of weeks. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we would like to say special thanks to our uh, special thanks to our wonderful sponsors, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, and many other uh, partners, including um, uh, including the Brain, uh, Brain Injury Association of Vermont, as well as the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and also another prominent partner, Enough Ministries of Barry, Vermont. Um, we would like to say um, special thank you. Um, so let's begin. Uh, some very prominent uh, things happened in um, history this past week. Queen Elizabeth II has passed away. Uh, so yeah, let's find out some information about her. Uh, Elizabeth Alexandra Mary um, which is uh, Queen Elizabeth II, has passed away. She was born on September, uh, her, uh, she was born, sorry, she was born on April 21st, 1926, and had passed away the 8th of September, 2022. She was the Queen of, uh, United, <clears throat> Queen of United Kingdom of England and other Commonwealth realms, from the 6th of February, 1952, until her death in 2022. She was the Queen uh, Regan of 32 sovereign states during her life as monarch of 15 of them at the time of her death. Her reign of 70 years and, two th and 214 days is the longest of any British monarch and the longest recorded in any female head of state in history. Elizabeth was born in Mayfair, England, and the first child of the Duke of Duchess of York, later King George VI, and Queen Elizabeth. Her father acceded the throne in 1936, and the abdiction of her brother, 
King Edward VIII. Making uh, Roman numerals was never my uh, strong suit. Um, um, King Edward VIII making Elizabeth uh, the heir presu um, presumptive. She was educated privately at home and began to undertake public duties during the Second World War, serving in the auxiliary to territorial service as well as becoming a truck driver. Um, in 1947, she married um, Philip Mountbatten, a former prince of Greece and Denmark, and their marriage lasted 73 years until his death in April 2021. They had four children, um, Charles III and Princess Royal, uh, Prince Andrew, Duke of York, and Prince Edward, Earl of Wessex. Um, uh, her father died in 1952. Elizabeth, then 25 years old, became queen of seven independent Commonwealth countries. Or, uh, countries. The United Kingdom, Canada, Austria, New Zealand, South Africa, Pakistan, and Ceylon, known today as Sri Lanka, as well as head of Commonwealth. Elizabeth uh, reigned over the continental, continental, excuse me, constitutional monarch through major po political changes, such as troubles of Northern Ireland. Um, Devolution of of United Kingdom and decolonization of Africa, and the United Kingdom's accession of the European communities and withdrawal of the European Union. The number of the realms varied over time as territories gained independence, and in some realms became republics. For many historic uh, meetings and visits, in, including state visits of China and in 1986, Russia in 1994, and the Republic of Ireland in 2011, and five visits with five popes. Significant uh, events include um, Elizabeth um, coronation in 1953 and the celebrations of the silver, golden, diamond, and platinum jubilees in 1977, 2002, 2012, and 2022. While I'm do while we're doing this show, we're gonna have pictures of Queen Elizabeth II, um, respectively. Uh, Elizabeth was the longest. Um, the longest living, uh, hold on, she was the longest living uh, reigning British monarch and the second longest uh, uh, reigning sovereign in world history and only behind uh, Louis, the, um, Louis the uh, uh, seventh of France, she faced occasional Republican uh, sentiment in the media criticism, and her family, particularly of the breakdowns of the children's marriage, and her um, Annas, um, the Annas. Harvest in 1992. That's a hard word to pronounce. Um, and the death of former daughter-in-law Diana, Princess of Wales, in, 90, in 1997. However, support of the monarchy of the United Kingdom remained constantly as, as uh, she did in the personal popularity of Elizabeth. Uh, she died at 96 years old in 
Baltimore Castle, uh, Abenshire, and she was succeeded by her eldest son, Charles III. Okay, and um, um, that's about Queen Elizabeth. Now, um, also another person who had uh, passed away over the last two days was uh, Bernard Shaw. Um, Bernard Shaw was one of the first anchors of CNN. So let's get to him and his life. Um, um, May 22nd, 1940, uh, Bernard Shaw, last name spelled S-H-A-W. He was a journalist uh, for many, many years. He was uh, born um, May 22nd, 1940, and died September 7th, 2022. Uh, and he retired from CNN um, in 2001. So let's get to him. You can find all this information on Wikipedia, and we're also going to have pictures of Bernard uh, Shaw, who is a prominent journalist. He was a, an American journalist and lead anchor, news anchor for CNN from, 19, um, from 1980 until his retirement in 2021 prior <clears throat> prior to his time in um prior to his time at CNN he was the reporter and anchor for WNUS uh, Westinghouse Broadcasting CBS News and MB and ABC um Shaw was born in Chicago, Illinois, to Edward Shaw, a railroad employee and house painter, and uh, Camilla Murphy. Um, Shaw, <clears throat> sorry, Camilla Murphy Shaw, a housekeeper. He attended, uh, Shaw attended the University of Illinois in Chicago from 1963 to 1968, and he also served in the United States Marine Corps uh, with stints in Hawaii and um, Cherry Point in North Carolina. In 1962, he was um, he was a mentor, uh, a message center specialist, achieving the rank of Corporal E4. He exhibited uh, a passionate interest in print media and clipped articles from uh, newspapers. He often traveled on weekends in Washington, D.C. He um, cultivated an acquaintance with Walter Cronkite and had an interest in baseball. Uh, Shaw's broadcasting career is very vast, and he served <clears throat> as anchor and reporter of WNUS in Chicago in 1964. He worked as a reporter for the Westinghouse Broadcasting Company in Chicago and uh, later moved to Washington, D.C. and the White House correspondent. He was the White House correspondent. He also worked as a correspondent in the Washington Bureau of, um, of CBS News and in 1971 to 1977. He also moved uh, to ABC News as Latin American correspondent and bureau chief and became uh, a Capitol Hill senior correspondent. Uh, we're having pictures um, scroll at the same time. Uh, Shaw left ABC in 1980 and moved to CNN as co-anchor of the Prime News broadcast uh, anchoring from Washington, D.C., Shaw's coverage of the 1981 assassination of um, U.S. President Ronald Reagan, with, with Shaw joining CBS News as correspondent, Daniel Shaw 
with Daniel Shaw, one of the first air personalities hired by the fledging cable channel, um, is credited by helping establish CNN as a credible and reliable bro uh, broadcast news and news source at the early point of the network's history. Shaw's widely known was widely known for the question he posed. He posed at the Democratic U.S. presidential uh, candidate Michael Dukakis at his second presidential debate with George H. W. Bush during the 1988 election, when Shaw was monitoring, uh, was moderating, knowing that Dukakis <clears throat> opposed the death penalty, he asked Shaw if he would. Um, support irrevocable death um, and not he would not he would logically not address it uh, sufficiently on the personal level Kitty Dukakis was among the public figures that found found the question inflammatory and unwarranted at a presidential debate um, Shaw is also remembered for reporting at the 1991 Gulf War um, reporting with CNN correspondents John Holloman and Peter Arnett and Ali at the Ali Rashid Hotel in Baghdad. He also found shelter at uh, he found shelter under a desk as he reported um, cruise missiles flying past the window. Um, he also made frequent trips back and forth from the hotel bomb shelter while describing a situation in Baghdad. He was famously, he famously stated clearly, I've never been there, but this feels like we were in the center of hell. That's according to uh, Shaw. Uh, Shaw co-anchored um, CNN's Inside Politics and uh, 1992 until he retired uh, in 2001, um, he then occasionally appeared on CNN in May 2005 when a plane flew into a restricted area in Washington D.C. He co-anchored Judy Wood Woodruff's last broadcast on CNN in 2005. Shaw reflected his 41 years in journalism and. Uh, what he missed in his personal life um, was not worth the success. Shaw appeared on the June 1st, 2020 episode of the CNN's uh, Edwin, uh, sorry, Aaron Burnett's Outfront uh, to recognize the 40th anniversary of the start of the network. Um, and uh, Shaw was a great journalist, and um, we send condolences to the to the family. Now, another uh, couple of things I want to mention uh, that's going to be happening on Ableton on air um, that I need to uh, promote. Um, Hold on. Okay, so um, I need to promote the uh, Brain Injury um, Association of Vermont. Um, Brain Injury Association of Vermont. Um, we need to. We are going to be promoting uh, over the next couple of weeks. Um, the Brain Injury Association creates a better future for Vermonters affected by brain injury through um, through education and advocacy. So I'm going to be um, talking about quickly um, before we end the show today. Um, the Brain Injury Association of Vermont's um, uh, website, which is www. 
uh, BIAVT.org. Their conference, which is in, um, if you want to find out more about their um, conferences, um, let me get to that here. Um, uh, their conference, uh, which happens to be October 12, 2022, in Killington, Vermont, uh, which I will be speaking as a self-advocate um, for more information on that conference and how to register for that conference, you can go to www.biavt.org. Um, for more information uh, also uh, about... Um, uh, the uh, Brain Injury Association, you can um, contact them. They, uh, matter of fact, uh, they are located at the following address. They are located at 1 Derby Lane, uh, Suite uh, 2, Waterbury, Vermont, 05676. Um, they are, um, their number is 802-244-6850. Um, and uh, if you want to find out more information on their organization, they provide the following um, trainings, um, their events. Matter of fact, let me uh, click on uh, their events here. Um, they have many different types of events. Uh, you can go to their event page. They have many uh, types of advocacy also. Um, brain injury. And there's also a, a situation here on how to become an advocate. And um, awareness month and so on and so forth. So for more information on their uh, information, you can go to um, www.biavt um, forward slash advocacy. Uh, and um, you can sign up for their conference on October 12, 2022, which is in Killington, Vermont. You can sign up, uh, and um, there is a small cost for the conference, so you can um, find out information about that and um, sign up for their conference. Um, so www.biavt.org. Also, um, just to also let you know about what's been happening in Vermont um, uh, over the last couple of weeks, um, there is an organization which we've had on the show before um, called All Brains Belong, and um, just to go over that real quick, they have a television sh television show on Orca Media which is at www.orcamedia.net. Um, you can click on All, All Brains Belong and uh, see their show. Um, they have many different things. Um, there is an access bar on their website, uh, www.allbrainsbelong.org, and you can find out about their um, community events, their education and how to get involved and there's also a contact page uh, you can click on their contact page and um, see all, what's all about if you have a uh, comment that you want to make on their contact page they will get back to you um, they have a lot of community events their community events and social connection opportunities for all brains belong uh, they have uh, inclusive design and connections. Uh, there are multiple ways to participate. The goal, the goal is low demand and uh, how to connect in many ways in your own way. We, uh, All Brains Belong brings people based on their shared interest and they connect with people who um, love what you love. Uh, before, <clears throat> before our nervous systems can be available for connection, we need to <coughs> we need to feel safe. Uh, all brains belong. Uh, welcome all nervous systems uh, to their organization. According to the website, um, whatever 
needs doing in order to regulate uh, move, flap, dance, or do your thing, as they say, <laughs> you, everybody belongs. Whatever is right for you. Um, All Brains Belong Brain Club Weekly Virtual Community Education Series is on Tuesday, six, Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. The Brain Club is a virtual weekly community education series, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, uh, you can read more about that by going to www.allbrainsbelong uh, forward slash community. And then they also have a... Uh, they also have a situation where you can um, call the Shifting the Autism Narrative, a healthcare provider's guide to the impact of stigma help. Uh, shifting the um, Autism Narrative, which is um, a healthcare provider's guide uh, of stigma and health a webinar presented by Dr. Melissa Hauser, MD, founder and executive director of All Brains Belong, um, Vermont. Um, she's an autistic family physician uh, caring for autistic patients and families uh, across um, the lifespan. Um, you can click to read more. Um, the webinar um, that is provi provided by All Brains Belong is presented by Dr. Melissa Hauser, founder and executive director of All Brains Belong. She is a family physician. Uh, you can click on their website to access the recording of, of the webinar. So for more information on that uh, information, you can uh, go to www.allbrainsbelong.org um, forward slash autistic health. Another forward slash. So today's show was about community events and what's going on uh, on the national front uh, about um, uh, Queen Elizabeth um, II and um, Bernard Shaw, uh, journalist who passed away from, uh, um, he started CNN and other community events. For any community event that Ableton On Air does, you can go to www orcamedia.net and find out all about Ableton On Air and all the community happenings that we have going on. Uh, and if you uh, want to find out more about advocacy and um, the Brain Injury Association of Vermont, you can also uh, go to www.biavt.org and also All Brains Belong at www dot allbrainsbelong.org and click on anything that uh, parents, caregivers, or anything that we talk about on Ableton On Air. Again, for more information on what's happening on Ableton On Air, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. I'm Lauren Seiler. Arlene is not here today. Thank you to our sponsors, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, and many others, including the partners of All Brains Belong, uh, partners, um, uh, the Association for the Help of um, the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Um, also partnering with us is, um, on a, on a, on a long-term basis, is the Brain, Brain Injury Association of Vermont and many, many, many others. Thank you. Uh, I'm Lauren Seiler. Arlene is not here today. See you next time on the next edition of Able Den On It. Major sponsors for Able Den On Air include Green Mountain Support Services. Empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Able Than On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, 
Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel and On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.